and Tim Liu, uh, both colleagues here at the Economics Department at Columbia. Uh, so let me start by describing the general problem uh, that we are interested in. Uh, so this is the situation. Uh, there is a principal, uh, this could be a firm, a non-profit, a government, who wants to obtain an innovation. Now, whether this innovation is feasible, whether the innovation can be obtained, uh, is initially unknown. It's something uncertain. Um, there are agents um, who can work on trying to obtain this innovation. They can experiment uh, with the principal's project over time, uh, which of course is costly for these agents. So the general question uh, we are interested in is how should the principal incentivize these agents uh, to experiment, uh, to try to obtain this innovation? More specifically, uh, the question that we are going to ask in this paper is what is the optimal content for experimentation? And uh, in recent decades, we have seen a large increase in the use of contests or prize awards uh, to procure innovations. Uh, so here are some data. Uh, this is from McKinsey. And this graph shows that the value of large prize awards, uh, prices over $100,000, uh, has increased quite dramatically uh, over the last 35 years or so. Interestingly, what we also see is that the composition of these prize awards has also um, changed. Uh, so before, most of these prizes were uh, recognition prizes. Uh, these are prizes that recognize prior achievements, uh, like the Nobel Prize or the Pulitzer uh, Prize. Uh, but now we see that the large share of the new prize money uh, corresponds to what McKinsey calls uh, inducement prices. Uh, these are prices that are given for achieving uh, well-specified goals, like for example, for obtaining a specific uh, innovation. Okay? And there are many examples uh, of these um, inducement prices, so here are some. Uh, as I show you, um, these prices are being used uh, more frequently nowadays, but we have been using contests and prize awards to procure innovations for uh, many decades. Uh, so we can go back to the early 1700s. Uh, the British Parliament wanted to find a method to uh, measure longitude at sea, and they offered an award for this. Uh, over there is the Orchid Prize. This was in the early 1900s for the first aviator to fly non-stop uh, New York uh, ferries. Um, here is one that is ongoing, maybe you heard about it, the Google Lunar X Prize. Uh, this prize is uh, sponsored by Google. Uh, many of these prizes are financed by new nonprofits and firms. And they are managed by intermediaries, uh, in this case it's the X Prize uh, Foundation. And the Google Lunar X Prize is for the first uh, private spacecraft that can land and travel across the surface of the moon and send back to Earth uh, specified data and images called moonlaps. Okay, and it's uh, $30 million. Um, uh, there are many examples. Uh, there are prizes for extending the lifespan of mice. Uh, there are, of course, many examples in the private sector. Um, we use grants to spur innovation, but now there is an idea that maybe contests or prize awards may be more effective um, for this. And in 2011, President Obama introduced the America Complete Authorization Act that gives authorization to uh, governmental agencies to use uh, prizes and contests to uh, spur innovation. Uh, we can also think, of course, of R&D competition, around patent races, firms are going to try to obtain an innovation, like a new drug, and the price is going to be the patent, the large uh, market share um, that they have. <coughs> right? So there are many examples we can think about. I'm going to uh, describe one more example that I think probably many of you heard about, and that I'm going to use uh, to describe what we do in this paper, and this is the Netflix price. Uh, I don't know if some of you have heard about this. Um, we know Netflix is this uh, internet television company, you watch uh, movies, uh, TV shows, and you rate them. And then based on your ratings and other people's ratings, uh, Netflix is going to make a recommendation to you uh, what to watch next, right? And in 2006, Netflix said, we want to improve the accuracy of this algorithm uh, that we use to give uh, these recommendations. Okay, and we want an improvement of 
10%. So very well specified mm -hmm. um, innovation. Okay? And they said we're going to run a contest for this, and we're going to offer a $1 million uh, prize. So there are several features of this example uh, that are shared by other examples uh, that are going to be of interest so one is, again, uh, we are going to have uncertainty. It's not initially known whether this 10% uh, uh, improvement uh, can be achieved. And indeed, you can see this price was announced in 2006. Only three years later, in 2009, the price was claimed. So uh, it was not obvious initially that we could indeed um, obtain this innovation. Right? This uncertainty is going to imply that the agents who work on trying to obtain this innovation are going to be learning over time, right? So if I'm in this contest and I'm trying to get this algorithm and I'm not succeeding, well, I'm becoming more pessimistic over time that the innovation is fickle, right? I'm thinking maybe this is just impossible, okay? So that's going to be important for us. <coughs> Another feature, of course, is that uh, the time and effort that these contestants are going to exert towards trying to obtain this innovation is not directly observable uh, to others. So Netflix cannot simply pay agents for effort. They have to find a way uh, to incentivize agents to work based on the outcomes that they can uh, observe. Right. And here is what our uh, the, the third element here, um, which is that the rules of this contest are going to affect, of course, uh, these agents' incentives uh, to work. Okay, so how uh, are we going to design uh, these rules? That's going to be the question on which we are going to focus. Uh, basically, in this paper, what we want to ask is what rules should Netflix use? What is the optimal contest design uh, for Netflix? Okay? So that's kind of the question. And so now we want to think that you know Netflix is going to call us. It's going to say, look, I have this algorithm, but I want to improve it. I want the 10% improvement. I just need one algorithm that gives me the 10% improvement. That's all I care about. And here is a $1 million price. So what contest do we want? Okay, can you do that for me? And now we need to think about what contest design we use. All right? So how do we do this? Uh, so first, let's think about what instruments we have available. So the first thing we will think about is how are we going to give this $1 million price? So we need to decide what is going to be the price share in okay? And for today's discussion, I want to think of two possibilities. So one extreme is going to be what we call a winner-takes-all scheme. Uh, so this is going to say the first contestant who obtains a success, uh, who finds a successful algorithm, is going to get the full $1 million price. Another possibility would be what we call equal sharing. Uh, so here we're going to say there's going to be some contest deadline, uh, some date at which the contest is going to end. And at that deadline, we are going to look at um, you know, which contestants uh, succeeded in obtaining this innovation uh, by this deadline. And we are, all these contestants are going to uh, share the $1 million prize anyway. So clearly very different uh, from the other side. What other instrument do we have? Well, how about the information that Netflix is going to give to these um, agents in the contest? Okay? So let's imagine I'm in this contest. And now uh, I obtain the innovation. Okay, I obtain a successful algorithm. I know about that. Uh, Netflix will know about that. Um, should Netflix announce this publicly? Okay. Uh, so again, I want to think for today of two extremes. Um, we can think of what we call a public information contest. Um, this is a contest where any success is going to be immediately disclosed to all the participants uh, in the contest. So at any point in time, I know exactly what's going on with my opponent. I know who succeeded, who didn't, and so on. Uh, the other extreme would be a hidden information contest. Uh, this is a contest where, again, we have some deadline, and Netflix is going to reveal nothing about other contestants until the deadline, and only at that point, I'm going to find out what happened uh, with my <coughs> So now that we think of these instruments and these possibilities, we can think of basically four um, contests. I can think of a public winner takes all contest where we are going to immediately reveal when someone succeeds and he's going to get the full price. Or we can think of changing the price scheme or the information disclosure policy or changing both and doing a hidden equal sharing contest where we are going to say nothing until the deadline, then we are going to reveal which agent succeeded and they're going to share the price. So we want to find out what's the best contest for Netflix. They just want to maximize the chance of obtaining this innovation. Okay? Uh, what we do in this paper um, is to look at more than four contests. We consider many possibilities. And uh, we 
Netflix just didn't inform me about this, but then he got the prize, and I'm wasting my time. Right? So my fear that maybe someone else already has seen it, I was not informed about this, is going to say, again, my incentive to work today. So what this intuition is saying is that Netflix should use a public winner takes all concept. So did we get it right? Is this the right answer? So we got part of it right, okay? <coughs> so what we got right is that indeed, a public winner takes all contest is going to dominate both a public equal trade contest and a hidden winner takes all contest. However, what we show in the paper is that very often, it is going to be best for Netflix to use a hidden equal sharing contest. So in other words, if I started a public winner takes all contest and I change either the price scheme or the information disclosure policy, this is not going to help Netflix. But if I change both things at the same time, well, this can increase agents' incentives to work and benefit uh, Netflix. So what we show is that depending on different conditions, I prefer to use the public winner takes all contest or a hidden equal sharing contest. What is the intuition for this? So remember I stressed at the beginning that we are in a setting of uncertainty. Okay, we don't know if this innovation is feasible. And as I said, this is going to lead to this issue that agents are going to be learning uh, over time. So that's going to result in a trade-off here. Okay, so on the one hand, I want to increase an agent's reward for success. This is what we talked about before, right? But on the other hand, I also want to keep an agent optimistic that he may indeed be able to succeed, right? If you offer me a very large price, but I think the chances of obtaining this algorithm are tiny, I don't want to spend my time trying to get this, right? So the fact that I want to increase an agent's reward for success is what is going to push towards using a winner takes all scheme. This is exactly uh, what we discussed before. But this idea that I want to keep an agent optimistic, that he may indeed be able to succeed, is going to tell me, well, maybe I want to hide some information, right? Because if you am in this public information contest, I know exactly what's going on with my work. If no one is succeeding, I know everyone in this room is trying, no one is getting the algorithm, well, then I'm becoming pessimistic very fast, right? I'm thinking, hey, this is just impossible. I don't want to work any longer on this, right? But how about you don't tell me that everyone is failing? Well, now I'm going to think maybe someone succeeded, and that means that the innovation is feasible and I can succeed too. But of course, if you're going to give the full price to the first successful agent, this is not going to help again, because whoever succeeded, he already got the price. So for this hiding of information to benefit, Netflix may increase in incentives to experiment, it has to be combined with some sharing of the price. Okay? So now I'm going to think, well, maybe everyone failed so far, in which case I'm very pessimistic, but if I succeed, I get the full thing. Or maybe someone succeeded, in which case I know I can succeed too, but I can only get a share. Okay? So this is kind of the trade. As I said in the paper, we consider a broad class of contests. Uh, so in fact, we allow for any uh, price sharing scheme, uh, not only equal sharing, uh, winner takes all, but anything you can think of. Uh, we look not only at public and hidden information, but also things in between that Netflix could do. And we show that the optimal contest for Netflix is always either a public winner takes all contest, or a hidden equal sharing contest, or a mixture of these two. So that Netflix starts with one, and if no one succeeds, they switch to the other. And we give conditions for when one contest or the other is optimal, and basically um, the main idea is what I mentioned before, is this idea of how important is this uncertainty about innovation. When this uncertainty is important and learning is important, then is when we want to use a hidden equal sharing contest because we need to keep these agents optimistic that they may indeed uh, succeed. So the general message from our work is that in these settings with uncertainty that we think, you know, uh, it's a key feature of many of the examples we can think about when we think about innovation. Um, in these settings, this common presumption that people have in favor of using uh, winner takes all schemes uh, should be qualified. Um, for our idea and innovation, very often uh, it's going to be best to do some sharing of the price and not automatically disclose all the information 